debai ekene pen mu no zo no bose oburochi nketa askam no bose nketa e mara na ina ma o ise 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 as waka nko eji nko eji ya zelu e di ko si de iya abukwa ni eastern news 24 ka isi wele o tero ya bu nuku e bose ozi de oke kwa ba sta maka yene me no boda an ba sta baka ko si afio de ke na nuku ko si afio I could not connect the hotel on the other day. Update the work of the Eastern News 24. A year, boy, nay, kill up Over the edge, wait, you didn't know if only on your own now for couldn't get a beef fair. But can I? When you know, hey, be in the way, be do. I don't know, I could say. A green outer. Oh, no, good night, what I need, work of war. But stomach up, we on yellow. Basta makine me no boda, ugega laga, nsi kam, nti ya, kaya gikode ya bi ifozo, di kinege ya bi fike siya ya, no din kegi, iti ya la ifi chen, ni wakuko, basta makine ya nda. Alright, over to you. Managed to envision a future, and they have never managed to look to a time beyond their own lifetime. Is essentially about the inability of those who have ruled Nigeria to understand the fact that there is a futuristic content to leadership. Whose leaders or ruiners have been unable to imagine a future beyond the immediate. And because of their inability to envision a, space, a time beyond the immediate, they have kept the Nigerian people constrained and incapable of growing beyond where they are. We have had a man like Gowon rule Nigeria. Gowon ruled Nigeria during the Civil War and in the immediate aftermath of the Civil War. He was a young man. He got married whilst he was in office. But there was nothing futuristic about his rule. For a country that had insufficient educational structure or infrastructure, I should say, this man's most famous statement till date is that Nigeria does not have a problem with money. It is what to do with money. That it was our problem. This was a country that didn't have sufficient healthcare infrastructure, didn't have sufficient road infrastructure, had antediluvian rail system. But the man at the helm of our affairs said Nigeria's problem was how to spend money. After him came Muritala and then. Obasan just succeeded him. After these ones came Shagari in the era when they were busy personalizing champagne. And then came Buhari, the ruinous one in his first reign. And all he could tell us was war against indiscipline. And then Babangida came, the gap to third one with a structural adjustment program a variant of which Jaguda has reintroduced today, where government more or less hands off everything and the provision of any infrastructure, where corruption was democratized even during the era of the military dictatorship. Abacha succeeded Mabangida the only thing futuristic about Abacha was his brutality and the repression of human rights. After Abacha came Abdul Salam, and then Obasanjo came a second time. And then you had Yara Dua, and then there was Jonathan. And then Buhari happened to us again. But in the midst of all of this, the one thing that is common to each and every one of those who have ruined Nigeria is the painful inability 
to envision a future. They were all lacking in foresight and they had no intellectual insight. They were consumed by the present. To be visionary, you have to be acquainted with the fact of your mortality. You have to understand the fact that you will die one day. There is nothing visionary that might be achieved in the lifetime of the visionary. You can only lay the groundwork for the achievement of vision. But those who have ruled us or ruined us have been consumed only essentially by what they might gain in the moment. They have never been particularly concerned about what the future might achieve or what might be delivered in the future. Their sole preoccupation is always about stealing, amassing wealth beyond their lifetime. They do not understand the fact that the richer they have become, the more impoverished we have all become as a collective. It is because of the inability to envision the future. Today, today, Dubai is miles, miles ahead of the West, not just Nigeria. The story is often told of how Malaysia came to Nigeria to take palm seedling. The Malaysians who came to Nigeria to take, to take palm seedlings, to start their palm plantations, are today exporting palm oil and vegetable oils to Nigeria. That is the work of vision, the capacity to see into the future. What is it about our country that is suggestive of visionary leadership? In the 2000s, we are building rail lines that had become obsolete since the 1960s. Everywhere else in the world, when they are envisioning rail lines, they are looking to build bullet trains, trains that would deliver speed, reliability, and mass movement. The train to Ibadan will take you in two hours, 40 minutes. Two hours, 40 minutes. Think about that. 160 minutes is what is required to take the Nigerian from one station in Lagos to the end line in Ibadan. That is the line that has rendered us as a debtor nation to China. What is revolutionary or visionary about that? We are building roads that are already obsolete before they finish building it. The most, the most ambitious road project I have seen in a long time is the Lagos end, or rather the Ekbe end of the Lagos Ekbe Expressway where you are having concrete roads, three lanes on each side, no service lane. Already, that road is obsolete, even before it started. They are building a coastal highway, four billion for each kilometer. Exactly how revolutionary or visionary is that ruinous road to greet? It is very easy for the West to point to North Korea as a failure. But because of the visionary leadership of Kim Jong-un and his father before him, that country could export power to us in Nigeria. They are a nuclear entity because of the visionary nature of that entity and the leadership. You can quarrel with his preoccupation, but you cannot fault the visionary nature of his leadership. The absence of vision only promotes the dissipation of our wealth. That is why in a country 
where people do not have portable water, those who call themselves leaders would sit down and buy luxury jeeps as official cars. That is why they will be telling you they are sinking boreholes at 198 million apiece. That is why they will be telling you that they are building highways at 4 billion per kilometer. They will dissipate and fritter away resources because there is no vision tied to their exertion. And by that only name, Kunis Nesser and the name, Neva Kuba. Adeke is so gay a beef in the the ballon, the gentle lion who was in Iraq war, no basin ketakano. Ozo de ki biabo. Kefi were equal basta maria beef and dan, you know, who was in Iraq war. The folk who lived in Oku Adeko said the Kefi were equal basta maria beef. A drop wire on the comment section below. Instant is twenty four. I see when you tell you no pose. I don't know when they want to come.